Thank you, Philip. Um, I'm sorry about my voice. It's not that good today because of uh, a cold got from my daughters. <laughs> um, but uh, I'll try to speak up anyway, so hopefully you can hear me in the back. Is it okay? Good. Okay, well, I'm Lars, and uh, I'm the lead uh, front-end developer at a company called Keep Focus in Silkeborg. And we uh, gather energy meter readings um, and visualize them in a couple of software products and uh, distribute them to billing systems also in Denmark. So we collect hourly readings from heating, water, electricity, everything, every kind of energy. <coughs> um, but today I want to to talk about Docker. Uh, first of all, who has heard of Docker? A show of hands. Okay. Who's familiar with Docker? Okay, pretty good. So I won't go very much in depth, but uh, I'll introduce some of the instructions for the Docker file, some of the basic ones. And hopefully in the end, you'll, every one of you will be able to produce a, a Docker file for um, uh, any kind of uh, single page application. And the end result will actually be a, a complete uh, built pipeline in a, in a single Docker file for an Angular app, but it works just as well on React or anything like that. <coughs> Sorry. Um, and just uh, so there's no confusion, there is a product or a tool called Docker Machine. This is not about Docker Machine. Uh, Docker Machine is kind of like to uh, manage um, Docker hosts um, remotely. Um, so it's not about that. So there's the concept of uh, containers, and there's actually a standard owned by the Open Container in Initiative, uh, which is backed by Docker Inc. Um, and the uh, containers are somewhat similar to uh, virtual machines, but they are much more lightweight. They, uh, they, they take up less space on your machine. They boot up faster. So you can spin up a lot of them uh, pretty fast. And uh, everything you need to, to um, to have to use them is a container host. And there is one for, for example, uh, Linux or Mac OS or even Windows. Uh, one thing, though, is that you need, you need the enterprise or the pro license for Windows. Uh, there is a workaround using VirtualBox, but, and it works. Uh, but uh, preferably, you should have the Windows Pro or Enterprise to use it on Windows. <coughs> but the, the main thing here is that you get a complete environment in a box, uh, and then basically in the end, you, you, you will have to stop using the excuse of it works on my machine, because the, <coughs> the, the thing you will be measured on is it works in the Docker container. So Docker is a suite of tools for creating, uh, uh, starting, and managing containers. There are other alternatives like Red Hat's Podman and Builder. Then there's this concept of the Docker Ignore file, similar to uh, .git Ignore file, but this one is ignoring files for the copy and add instructions in the Docker file. The Docker file is basically a, a recipe for building a container image, so it's kind of a, a recipe for building an entire system and. Okay, we want this Linux distribution or win even Windows Server, uh, and we need this package um, so that we can spin up an, a Node.js server or Ruby or whatever it might be. Uh, some of these instructions create a different uh, intermediate image layer, as it's called, um, per single instruction, and then based on changes in, in files, uh, you can cache some of these layers when building or running the container. So these are, I think, it's, it should be all of the, the instructions for Docker file, and we'll briefly look at the ones that are highlighted in bold here. Only the run and the copy and the add instructions today will, will create these different layers uh, that are cached between builds. <coughs> it used to be that more of them did that, but they've been optimized in some way that so that only these three commands will add an additional layer uh, to the image. So the first instruction here is the from instruction, and you use that to say, this is my base image, so I want all the instructions from this image, and it can be 
simply a name that it'll uh, fetch from the Docker hub or any other uh, container registry for that matter. It's kind of similar to importing from NPM in a, in a JavaScript app. And then there's the, you can alias it and give it a, a stage name that we will use in this multi-stage Docker file. <coughs> for example, here we can alias the, the node image and call it the build stage. And we can take a specific version of node. For example, here it's the long-term term support version of node. So currently it's version 10. And it'll run on Alpine Linux. Uh, Alpine is a very small distribution of Linux, like five megabytes. So it's good for these uh, containers, usually. Um, but ma many times you need to add a lot of dependencies on top of it. So in the end, it's, it's not that small. For example, adding Chrome browser and Firefox will put in several hundred of megabytes on top of the, the Alpine. So so it's not as small anymore, but still smaller than, for example, uh, Debian or yeah, Ubuntu. OK, so you can also use a, a hash. So you can the hash of different images and, and refer to that instead. <coughs> then there's the ENV instruction. That's for adding environmental uh, variables inside the container. Uh, you can overwrite these when you run the container. Um, but these are kind of like the, the default values that we declare here. Then there's the copy instruction. And this is where you, for example, copy in the, the Angular app or React app or whatever from your file system into the container file system. And there are a lot of different syntaxes for, for the copy instruction. You can have pattern support with the wildcard. You can copy several files. You can uh, add in user and user group. Um, declarations if it's a Linux container. Or you can copy from a, a stage name, a stage that was early in the Docker file, if you have this uh, multi-stage uh, Docker file that we'll look at in this uh, presentation. So for example, here in the bottom, we see that from the previous uh, build stage, we will copy over the, the dist folder produced by Angular and the readme uh, markdown file into the file system of the, the Linux container. Okay, then there's the run command, so or the run instruction. And this will um, this will execute a command uh, inside the container. Um, and for Linux containers, it'll be the sh, the shell command for, for Windows, it'll be the CMD uh, command by default. Uh, but you can, as you see in the bottom example here, you can use ba uh, bash instead, if you prefer. Uh, the work dear um, instruction is where you, you set kind of like uh, uh, running the, the CD command in a terminal. So you enter some directory, and then the, the copy and the add commands will use that uh, directory for, for the, their instructions. Expose is where you, you define the ports that you can map from the container to the host machine. And for example, for a web server, you will expose the port 80 and 443 for uh, HTTPS and HTTP. And uh, if you have a, if you want to, by default, it's TCP protocol, but you can also expose UDP. There's an example of that in the bottom. Uh, sorry. <laughs> The entry point, that's where you, so if you want some uh, executable run uh, whenever the, the container is actually uh, run by, by Docker or another host, this is the, the instruction used for that. And with the CMD that you also see here, uh, you can add default parameters that you can uh, overload or, or replace with other parameters uh, when you run the image, as you see here in the bottom with the Docker run command. Then there's the docker build command. And this is where you take a docker file and you, um, you build an image. And from this image, you can, uh, you can run containers. Or, yeah, maybe the, uh, the, sorry, the text is a bit wrong here. <laughs> you build an image from a docker file. Um, 
Yeah. And uh, with the build command, you can also um, put in a sp specific stage of the build file. If you have a multi-stage build file, uh, like I'll show you. So for example, in the button uh, uh, command here, you can see that we are targeting the, t uh, the test stage of the Docker file. And then there's the Docker run, where you can replace the, the commands that you, you forward to, to the container. And you or you don't even have to, to add in commands. Maybe you just run as is, and it'll spin up a web server, like, like this uh, following example will do for you. So here's a very basic example of an, an echo container. So it's simply an alpine. And uh, the command executed will be the echo command. So there's a default uh, parameter of hello world. But if you run it uh, with additional command, for example, hello Aarhus.js, that'll be the, the command and, and the output you will see from the container when running it. And of course, you can stop a running container again, as we see here. OK, so now we come to the, the multi-stage uh, build. It's a single Docker file, but it has multiple from instructions uh, and as soon as you add in a new from instruction, um, it'll basically start from scratch uh, with that image. So that means that in the top here, uh, we are, we are uh, building from a node uh, image because we need to, to build our uh, Angular app uh, with Yarn or NPM or whatever. And then we start another stage uh, with the Nginx uh, web server on top of us, an Alpine Linux distribution. And we copy over the file from the previous stage, which means that um, the resulting image will be uh, very small because we don't include Node in that image. Since we're just serving static files, we won't have to, to use Node for this. And then we add a Nginx uh, config um, that's in the repo. So now I think it's time to show you some code instead. <coughs> Let me just try to figure this out. There we go. Excuse me for a second. So in this uh, project, it's just an Angular CLI generated app. Uh, there is not that much to it. Um, I just added a couple of lazy loaded routes so that we can see the end result that it actually works. Uh, but the, the main thing here are the Docker files. So here's the, the main Docker files. This is the multi-stage build. Um, and as you saw before, we start with the node. And we uh, open up some directory. It's not. <laughs> it's just something I, I I chose to put the files here. There are <laughs> different opinions on where to put files like this. Uh, so I copy in the files and then I run yarn install. This is the first first stage, which I have alias as uh, app. Is the code uh, visible all the way in the back? Good. Okay. Then we move on to the next stage here, and uh, this is where I ran into trouble because now I need a browser, uh, Chrome specifically. There is also a Firefox in this one. So I went to the Docker Hub uh, registry and uh, looked for uh, node containers with Chrome browsers or anything like that. And there was a lot of tutorials online, but I couldn't get any of them working. Maybe I did something wrong, but in the end, I ended up um, having to use uh, Stretch, which is a version of Debian uh, Linux instead of Alpine. And as you can see here, we are installing yarn uh, in this run command, or run instruction. <coughs> and then we are simply adding the packages for Chromium and uh, for Firefox, and uh, some other here for Git and Gzip. OK, then. And then we add a few environmental variables here to to point to the Chrome uh, executable in the system. 
and we copy over um, the files here um, from the previous stage, which was the, the node server um, with the, I think it was with the dependencies installed. Yeah, from the yarn install. Okay, so this, this stage here, the long stage, we call this test base. Can be called anything, it's just what I chose to call it. Because the ne next stage is here. Uh, this is the test stage, which runs the test command, which are unit tests and integration tests in Angular. Um, and if that succeeds, we will move on to the next stage where there's end-to-end uh, -end tests, and it uses the same base image, the test base, and it only runs this single command. And if that succeeds, we'll f move forward to the build stage, because that means we have a working app if we've tested well enough. Um, so we will go back to the app image, which, which was our app, our source files, and the uh, node modules installed as well. And then we'll simply run uh, the build command uh, with the Angular CLI. And uh, once that's done, and it, if it compiles well, uh, we will move to the last stage here, which is a production-grade um, Nginx server uh, running on Alpine. So from the build stage, we will copy over the compiled files into this default Nginx directory on, uh, on Alpine Linux. Then the only thing left is to copy over this Nginx config file. We can take a quick look at that as well into this location uh, that Nginx is, is pointing to for looking for its uh, configuration file. Only thing uh, left to do here is uh, say that you can, you can use the 443 port. Uh, this image already exposed the port 80 uh, I also added this on top of that since we're inheriting or extending this, this image. So I don't need to expose port 80 here since it's already done in this image, but it wouldn't hurt to do so here also. It, it wouldn't break anything. Okay then, so maybe we can try uh, running this and see if it, it will actually work. Um, so I have a npm scripts for this, so they are in the package JSON file. There is a Docker build script, and uh, hopefully something will show up here. The Windows terminal is sometimes a little funny in in VS Code. Where did it go? Okay, I'll try to run it myself then. Yeah, something's funny here, but um, I'll run the, the Docker build script, and um, we can take a look up at that afterwards. So here it's running through the stages. Every step is an instruction in this Docker file. Uh, so now it'll install the, the node modules, and uh, if that succeeds, it'll move on to the next stage, which was the test base, uh, where we install uh, the, the Chromium browser and the Firefox, and um, if that goes well, and it's okay, it didn't go well. <laughs> right. You are right. There's no internet. That's why it fails. So it's working. It's tell telling me the wrong, the, the the right thing. You're right. So which one was it? Impact Wi-Fi guest. Come on. There we go. Okay, let's try again. No, didn't go well. Okay then. Yeah, so maybe it cached the layer before uh, and didn't get whatever. So. Let's 
try again. So this is node modules, which, yeah, I guess they were, I don't know, maybe they were cached before, but what we're actually missing, I don't know, maybe it was the, the node modules that were missing. Okay, moving on, hopefully. <laughs> so next stage, because this was only the first stage. Uh, but maybe it's downloading Debian, and there's a lot of packages there, so let's see here. Yeah, here they come. Okay, there's a lot of stuff going on here, so maybe I'll just run it in, uh, in the kind of background here in the bottom. And we can take a look at this next file. Uh, which is a, a Docker file with a single stage. Um, <coughs> because in this one, I created the, the Webpack development server for Angular. Uh, so it has live reload from the actual directories here in the project. So it's not copying in files, it's using what's called a volume in Docker file. So I will pass in uh, this, this directory when running the container and it'll mount uh, the directory from the host system into the container. And then I'll just run uh, the start command from the Angular CLI. Um, so hopefully we can get a good look at that also um, in a sec. I can also, while this is running, I can show you the Nginx uh, config here. So it opens up the, the HTTP and HTTPS ports. It adds gzip. It uh, selects the directory. And it uh, redirects um, all the routes to, to the index uh, file from Angular, except for the files, uh, which I also cached. OK. So I can remember, th <laughs> did we get to this stage before? Uh, so it's actually running build now, I think. So it's one of the last stages. Oh, here we go. So now this was a su successful build. So now I have a Docker image called Docker Angular, the latest, which means that I can run it. And I should have an Nginx server. Oh. Maybe I call it something stupid like deploy. But it's simply running the, the Docker uh, container from this image. And it's spinning up a container called Docker Angular Production. It maps the ports uh, 80 and 443. But I could have added any port on my machine and mapped it to the port 80 of the container and the port 443 as well. And this is the name that was just built uh, up here. So now it's running, which means that I should be able to see it here on port 80. There we go. And uh, this is a lazy loaded route, which also works. It's only changing this thing here. Hopefully you can see it. So this actually works from a static uh, Nginx uh, server. So that was a, a success. And you can see here the output from Nginx as well. But uh, let's shut it down for now. OK, that was the multi-stage uh, build. Um, but let, let's quickly try to break something. So the first step here from tests is the unit test. So I'll quickly find a unit test here. And uh, there's one uh, looking for the t uh, title of uh, Docker Angular. So maybe I want this title instead. So I'll add it to the tests. And um, now I'll, I'll run, uh, or I'll build the, um, the Docker uh, image again. And hopefully it'll, it'll fail since I didn't uh, change the implementation code. I only t changed the test code. So 
we should see it stop in the build uh, process when it goes uh, when it reaches the the test stage <coughs> where the unit tests are run. So it'll just take a second or a minute maybe. Um, yeah, just give it a minute. <laughs> go. Yeah, maybe I should not have uh, busted the, the cash for this, this time. Gotta be safe. Right. But the cool thing about this is that you can run the same kind of pipeline that's declared in the Docker file. You can run the same thing on any CI or CD server. So, so you can run it on your own machine or you can run it in Travis, you can run it in Circle CI or whatever. Um, so it's very similar to a pipeline in one of these CI or CD servers. Um, and uh, what we'll see here is that since the test does not um, are not successful, it'll return. It'll have a return code of uh, a positive integer, yeah, one. So the build fails. The build of the container image. So. And we even get the output here to say that shows that uh, we expected Docker Angular to equal Aarhus JS. So this is what it actually says right now, and this is what we want it to say, of course. So let's uh, go into the implementation, the template here. No, it's I guess it's in the component. Let's fix it. And we try again, maybe. It can work with the cache of the layers. And hopefully it will pick up that there is a change in the file. So we need to run the following steps. Step, yeah, OK, I, I didn't figure out yet how to cache the node modules properly. Maybe there's a, some cool way to do that. Has anyone tried that to get that working in Dockerfile? Um, well, at least in the in the Docker file, you, I can node modules from the host machine so that I don't have to wait for node uh, npm install to run uh, before I can use the server, since I will already have them in my, in my project here. Uh, but in the build process, of course, I want to see that everyone running npm install can actually do a successful build, so I won't uh, rely on the one provide provided by my host machine. Okay, yeah, it went to end-to-end -end tests, and uh, there's a similar thing there. I, I won't show you how to break that, but it's, it's the same thing. And the only thing here... <laughs> okay, there was another text somewhere. No? What's the title? So what went wrong? Welcome to Aarhus JS. Welcome to Docker Angular. Is it end maybe the end-to-end -end test? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay. So I broke the end-to-end -end tests. Good thing I didn't deploy it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. OK, we'll run it again. Um, yeah, but I only chose to do it in Angular, since I'm most familiar with the Angular CLI. But you can do the same thing with Create React App. Uh, so there's not that much to it. Um, and as you saw, just a second. As you saw here in the Docker file, I'm simply running the, the NPM scripts, but I'm using yarn, but you <coughs> would just say NPM run instead. So everything is in here in the package JSON. So here we have the build command. We have I only have a single test command here. I, I, I needed to add an, another 
specific uh, configuration for Docker or, or any container environment here. Uh, so that's in the Karma config. Uh, so the only thing here is when you run it in a container, unless you add uh, super user uh, privileges uh, with some uh, parameter, you will have to run Chrome uh, without a sandbox. Um, so that's the only thing you need to change to get this running. <coughs> okay, so what else? There's the build command. It's simply running Docker build and tagging it. Docker Angular and the dot means take from, from this directory, so it'll look for the Docker file. Uh, you <laughs> when you play with this, you get a lot of Docker images running, so they will actually take up uh, <laughs> several gigabytes of space. Uh, so every once in a while, it's nice to be able to clean up. Uh, this is a Linux command, but that's since I also have Ubuntu running on top of uh, Windows, which I don't know how, but it works. <laughs> Microsoft actually did a pretty good job at that, or who whoever was involved. Yeah, okay, so now we actually got a production build, and uh, maybe you can just run it, or deploy, I guess I call it. And we can look in the browser again, and uh, now we see Aarhus JS. Yeah. So we have a successful build pipeline here. Shut it down, and I can show you the development pipeline, or the development Docker file. And uh, I called that Docker Start for Windows and Docker Start for Linux. Uh, and the only difference here is that in uh, Linux, you can pass in the result of uh, running a command with dollar parentheses. In Windows, you can do it with uh, the whatever they are called, the percentage sign instead, and you use the CD command to get the current directory. So that's the only difference here. So I'm passing in the volumes, um, the current directory, except for the ignored files, putting it in the volume on this lo location in the file. And I'm also adding the node module, so I don't have to wait for And uh, it'll tag the image as um, Angular development. Uh, or rather it'll build uh, the image first and then it'll, it'll run a container uh, in the interactive mode uh, with the TTI, which means that I get output and I can put input in as well, but it's mainly just to see output in the, the console here. And the RM means that it'll remove all the intermediate stages, uh, but there's there is none in this one, so <laughs> I guess it doesn't make sense here. It's a single stage uh, build file. Okay, well then there's the file, development Docker file, in the, and give it the, the current files. Um, but uh, I guess let's just try to run it here instead. Uh, yarn. Okay, there we go. It was, was pretty fast. So the development server is running on 4200. I hoped. Guess not. Okay, it wasn't completely done. <laughs> now we have to wait for Angular and TypeScript. Okay, there we go. So now, yeah. Let's see if live reload works. Um, so I save the file and it takes a little while. There's no hot module replacement, but there we go. So all of this is running inside the container. Um, and for the build pipeline, I don't have to I don't even uh, need to have the node modules installed on my host machine, but for this specific development um, Docker file, I chose to use the, the node module directory from my host machine instead. Um, and uh, everything's working quite nicely. Uh, the only thing I didn't add here was the 
the linting of, of my files, so running TS lint, but um, or ES lint or whatever. But uh, I didn't want that to break the, the build pipeline because there will be wars then like about semicolons and stuff. So I don't I don't think that was enough that should be enough to build to break the build if if there's a lint error so, so but I think it should be enough that the tests are broken or the implementation is broken who knows Okay um yeah maybe as a final thing here I can shut this one down and I can try inside from Ubuntu to do the same thing uh run the docker build and we'll have that wait for a while. I um, guess we could take a few questions uh, while it's doing that. And you, Tom um, Thomas? Couldn't you, uh, couldn't you utilize more caching if you would distribute your copy commands in different, uh, like y now you're saying copy dot to dot but if you were saying copy package JSON to package JSON and copy source to source, then it wouldn't reinstall your node modules, maybe? Your package JSON didn't change? Yeah, I don't know. I didn't figure that out. <coughs> it didn't work. I mean, you would, you would just copy just the package JSON and the yarn log file into the container and run the install commands. And the caching works. Yeah. As far as I can understand, in the way that it's a container, it's the same before it's done. <coughs> then you would just need to cache the code. So if there's only a package JSON file and a yarn log in the container, then the uh, cache is the same. Yeah, so the, there is a yarn log file here. And I think I had it added to the ignore file. Where's that? No, I didn't add it here. So that should be part of the, the image. Yeah, I don't know why this doesn't work, but of course. I, I think it should be standalone. So first, you copy only the JSON and the log. Okay. The oh, like that. Yeah, because <coughs> if something yeah. else in your app has changed, then it will break the cache. Right. Okay. Yeah, copy is always going to break the cache, right? Yeah. Good. Copy yeah. the dot to the dot. Okay. Was that, was that what you were trying to explain, <laughs> Thomas? <laughs> yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, so, so if you had something like copy, package, JSON or there's the yarn lock here, but let's just, um, yeah. You can, co should be able to copy multiple ones? No, maybe I read the documentation wrong. Let's just say that it, it was package JSON and package lock JSON. And then you ran the yarn install, and this layer should be able to cache then for the node modules. And then we can add in the additional <coughs> files here from the project. Or I'd, I don't know, may, maybe you need to separate them into the different directories or something. Then the usual way is to, to use this one as a, as a throwaway. So you just copy the node module folder uh, after you install into a new container. OK. Don't, uh, this is going to work just fine, I think. We can use the same trick, even though it's on a Ruby and Rails project. You have the gem file and yeah. the model install. You use the exact same thing. So we start by importing the, coming in the gem file doing the bottle install, which takes a while, and then that's going to be a cache layer. And then we copy over all the source code and run the test from there. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this pattern should work. OK, so for the YouTube viewers, uh, an audience member here is saying that it, this pattern works for, for gem files w with Ruby and Rails. So it should also work for node modules in, in uh, JavaScript projects. So that was the, the thing I did wrong in this, this build, or it could be more optimized so that we can cache node modules and we don't have to wait for half a minute for it to, to download. Uh, but this downloading of Chrome, that should be cached between uh, builds, I think, since it doesn't depend on anything. Yeah. Okay, let's see if the Docker, okay, something went wrong here. Two failed tests. <laughs> Right. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, damn tests. Uh, so 
Well, yeah, <laughs> skip the test and push to production. Okay, no, we have to follow the spec here, so <laughs> we'll add in the correct implementation and run the build again. Um, and uh, I'll try to experiment with that caching of node modules. And or someone else could do it. Uh, there's um, <coughs> the last slide here. There's a, a link to a GitHub repo uh, on my GitHub profile. And there's all the code from this presentation. And here are the <coughs> slides. My profile's on Medium, GitHub, Twitter, LinkedIn, email. But you can go and uh, file in a pull request. And everyone can <laughs> enjoy from faster builds in Docker. Uh, or maybe even, I don't know, add a, a React version or something like that. Well, I have a question. Maybe you'll mention it. When do you think uh, we should add a, a, a Docker implementation in our development setup? Uh, is, is it the one where our team needs to get bigger or our projects get bigger? Or what, what do you think? Yeah, when, so the question is when should we look for Docker? I mean, so, so it's the extra layer of complexity. yeah, yeah. So it's, it adds uh, more complexity, as you say, but at the same time, we don't run into these. Um, so the more developers you have, maybe some of them run Linux, maybe some run Ubuntu, some run Debian, Arc Linux, and CentOS and whatever. Some run uh, Mac OS, and some even uh, dumb enough to run Windows. So <laughs> then you, you run into trouble of, okay, this node module do doesn't exactly work that way because some of the node modules, especially used for tooling, they actually use some C++ or Python and some other native code behind the scenes. So some of them rely on, on packages from the, the host uh, operating system. So there are, there are these differences. And of course, everyone's been able to, uh, had, had probably had the experience of, well, it works on my machine, so <laughs> why doesn't it work in production? Well, now you can know. So what if you're a team of three, would, would it make sense if you're three developers and, uh, and you implement it? Um, yeah, if it makes sense for everyone, even small teams, well, so you have to learn Docker. Uh, you have to install Docker, but I mean, from from this half an hour, 40 minutes presentation, you can get the basics up running, and this this should be enough for front end developers at least. I mean, uh, back end stuff with all the uh, different OS packages, um, or even something like Ruby. I experienced that. Uh, well, the Linux guys, they <laughs> Ruby is no problem, but for me on Windows. Yeah, it just doesn't work. So I had to install Ubuntu and use that to run the, the Ruby, all the Ruby tools for the, all the gems that depended on specific versions of uh, Open SSH and uh, something like that. So yeah, it, it can make sense. I mean, we are we are something like ten developers, but uh, we are using Ruby and a lot of different gem files there. So. And we are using, there's no policies to say you must run Windows or Linux or whatever. So we have a lot of different operating systems. So uh, it, it makes sense for us to, to wrap it in a, in a Docker container. Mm -hmm. and, and adding on top of that, uh, if you have a, a big volume of data or something like that, you can even go to the next level, which is using Kubernetes to orchestrate this. So you can scale up your web servers uh, per demand or just say, well, I need five web servers more, and the load balance between them. Okay, I'll just spin up five more containers. Just tell me where the hosts are. Yeah, so there's no excuse in my voice. It works on my machine. And even if you have a really good demo for clients or customers, it, it should always work. Yeah, yeah so, so yes, so, so I don't make a fool of myself in some demo because I was trying to run the this Git repo on a uh, Mac OS that, yeah, that or some or of you brought or something. Right. Okay. So I haven't tried this because now we're getting into the gray zone where this is Windows, but it's also Ubuntu. They see each other as local hosts. So maybe I have a web server running on port 80 from Ubuntu inside Windows. Now I'll try it. I don't know. It's beyond me, but let's see here. Yeah, it works. It works. 
on my machine. <laughs> Okay, is there maybe one more question? Yeah? Uh, did you run into any issues with uh, external tooling? So for example, uh, this is in, in my development workflow, I use Float and prob uh, probably uh, TypeScript has the same problem, like the TypeScript language server protocol. Uh, how would my IDE use the Float server that runs in Docker? Like is that even possible? Uh, well, as you see here, localhost on port 80 sees the Docker container as localhost. So yeah, you could have a, a language server running an, in a container. I was trying to figure out how to do the unit test and end-to-end tests, and at some point I was trying to run a standalone Selenium server in one container and have it connected in the, in the network to another container. Uh, but it, it didn't turn out well. It was <laughs> pretty difficult to, to make that work, but uh, I'm not a, a, any kind of Docker expert. I only wanted to figure out what's the, the basics so that you can use all your CLI tools. I think Docker Compose would be there. Yeah, so yeah, of, yeah of, of course. Yeah, I was trying to use the, the Docker Compose, and that's where you have this configuration file and say, Okay, I need one of them, and it should be able to refer to this container by this host name. So even though it's any, it could be any container with any name, uh, from the from container A's point of view, the host name for this one is simply database or, or whatever. Yeah. So you can use Docker Compose for that, or Docker Swarm, or Kubernetes. Yeah. Okay. So thank you very much, guys. <laughs>